I want to start by saying that there is like no one way that works for everybody. And I think that sometimes when we talk about positive discipline, it can be hard because if you don't implement the method in a certain way, you kind of feel, you know, you can feel bad. I've been there. I do want to say that every day is a new day with your toddler. Every day is a new day with yourself. Every day is a new day to try new things. And so we're here to just give you some perspective and some additional tools and things to think about. We're parents too. We are so in this with you. And so I wanted to start with toddler tantrums. Oh yeah. Who doesn't love a good old toddler tantrum? And we've all been there. I'm also a parent. Um, you know, the thing about tantrums is that that is really, they start when the child has a voice and maybe a little more mobility. And so there's a lot of independence and autonomy that's coming. And a tantrum is a way to assert that voice. And so instead of squishing the voice, we want to make space for that voice. And perhaps one technique you can try, and again, there's many, is to just mirror back what you think they're trying to say. So it might look something like, I see that you really wanted something else and you're not getting what you want this time. And that's really hard, isn't it? And just stay present with that moment and don't try to fix it. Don't try to talk them out of their feeling. Just sort of say what you see, empathize, and then just stay present and let them feel felt so that they can sort of calm in the midst of their storm. Okay, so now I'm just like, I'm the toddler and I'm just freaking out. I mean, I can't even hear you saying anything. Mm -hmm. It's like you kind of empathizing with me is not working for me because I am just, I mean, my own voice is the sound I hear. Mm -hmm. It's not really the voice of my parents. So what, right. what do we do? What are some other tools in the toolbox? Yeah, you know, it's something to keep in mind is that what you're describing there, going on with maybe a one and a half, two-year-old, has a very different outcome than perhaps with your three or four-year-old. Okay. Um, a one and a half, two-year-old in the midst of a tantrum, they don't even know what they want anymore. They sort of lost their mind, so to speak. And so you want to stay present with very few words. You're not there to be rational with them because they are not capable of being rational with you. So when you just stay present, maybe a little pat on the back, I know this is hard, mm -hmm. and just stay present with your body, then what you're doing is you're modeling for them calm. And you're, it's an invitation back to being calm. Um, a three and four year old tantrum gets a little different because they can start to rationalize a little bit more. And you might be able to use more words, but in the midst of that storm, staying calm matters most. So Jody, what do we do physically with our toddlers? If they are like rolling around, like maybe there's like something even dangerous, like, or they're in like a, you know, a public place or shopping, you know, a target. And they're just like, they're just like writhing around. What do we do physically? Can we hold them? Do you ever, what are your recommendations on that? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I'd say it's really going to depend on your child and probably their size. Yeah. Um, I'm a fan of staying present with my body, with my whole body, mind, and spirit. And that might be, yep, I'll sit down on the floor in the middle of the Walmart if that's what I need to do. You know, I might do a little touch. Um, if you feel like this is something I really do need to pick you up, the only thing I would say is, let them know first, hey dear, it looks like you need some help. I'm gonna pick you up. At least they have a little warning. Yeah. Um, go ahead and pick them up. They might be writhing. I think it's better if we don't do that, mm -hmm. if we have that option. You know, and if you feel a little uncomfortable with the idea of your child having this rolling fit on the ground in public and you really wanna use it as a training, then just bring yourself a little sign and just put it right out in front of it and say parent and child in training. At least people know <laughs> you're trying, <laughs> you know, sort of wet paint or caution. It's caution, family in, in training. Um, uh, and maybe that's, that's extreme, but the reality is our body presence matters. And so if we are going to pick up, warn them and then pick up gentle with with a feeling of I'm not trying to force you. I can see this is hard. Give them a little pat on the back mm -hmm. and then get out of there as well, quickly as you can. Yeah. So for years people have said just ignore the behavior. And there's sort of this fine line between ignoring your child and ignoring the behavior. And when you're ignoring the behavior, that's when you sort of like go about life. You might give this little, this moment of empathy if, you've, if you're collected enough, but otherwise you're sort of going about life, sort of expecting that it's gonna calm, 
calm down eventually. And as soon as it calms down, they're back, you're back, life goes on, right? S ignoring the child, so that's kind of ignoring behavior. Ignoring the child is sort of like you, you leave the room and you're sort of unavailable emotionally or physically for the next 30 minutes, which is eternity for a, to for a toddler, right? Or, well, I mean, let's not say, let's say you wouldn't really want to leave your toddler alone for 30 minutes, but let's say you're, they're like grabbing at your leg, they're throwing a fit, they're, they're, you know, and, and you're, are you supposed to just kind of like slowly proceed with what you were doing? Um, I, I feel like that that's hard because that feels like disconnect. Mm -hmm. But I also know that sometimes it's really it's a tool that, that we sometimes go to because we're feeling so upset about That's what's right. happening. That's right. And I want parents to know that there's a lot of power behind being firm. And what I would say is when you feel like you need to kind of hold that firm line, like, hey, hitting me isn't okay, or um, knocking something over and being destructive is not okay, to do that with a connection and then a correction. So you might say, I can see you're really upset and it's not okay to hit. So at least you're giving them, I see this hard, this is hard, I'm validating, I'm empathizing, and I'm being clear about what is or isn't okay. But I would, um, that's a little different from, say, ignoring behavior, you know, and sometimes parents, when they ignore, um, their body language feels very um, unavailable. And um, that is distressful for a child. A big tool is prevention. And so, um, of course, Using our routines are always very, very helpful, but let's face it, we're all parents and sometimes we've got to be off routine because life happens. So when you're in the grocery store or you're at Target or someplace where you know a potential tantrum is going to happen right at that candy aisle, right? When your cart is full and you know you can't abandon this cart because you just shop for 20 minutes. So what you can do is anticipation with your child. So maybe on the way to the store, you can talk about, Okay, remember when we're finished today and we're headed to the cart or taking the cart up to the check checkout, remember how hard it is to walk past all that candy. Let's think about a plan that you and I can make. Maybe would you like to be in charge of pulling the credit card out of the wallet today? So as we're pulling up, I can hand you my wallet and I can give you a job. So you're just distracting them from this temptation. You're giving them, them a way to be helpful because remember, they want to feel capable. And then you're also thinking in advance of a plan. It's very empowering for both of you. Yeah, and if you bring up, I think sometimes we worry about like bringing up candy, right? Like we don't want to bring up the thing that they usually triggers them mm -hmm. or the whatever it is, the, the fun thing or the mm -hmm. toy. Or, mm -hmm. And so how do you think about that? Like, do we want to be putting that into their consciousness on the way to the store or just facing that head on actually help them process and, and be prepared? I think it's really it's helpful to face it head on. The younger the child, I would put less time between the dialogue and when it actually happens. So if they're two, you might be having this conversation at the back of the store on your way up. Pause for a moment and have a quick powwow and say, all right, let's go practice. So Jody, how do you have that mindset of remaining calm when your toddler's throwing a tantrum? I wish I had the magic answer for that for everybody all the time because I know I'm not perfect at all. But something I certainly worked on when my kids were younger was thinking about responding versus reacting. And the reacting is pretty automatic. And the children are probably expecting that reaction because we've probably been in this cycle before. And they sort of know what's coming. So a response would be actually doing nothing and maybe choosing to just take a deep breath and say nothing. And you're probably about 50% better because at least you're not going to jump into the typical cycle that you both, you know, start rolling out together in. And it might unravel a little slower mm -hmm. if you just do nothing, mm -hmm. take a deep breath and just wait for a moment. Okay, so Jody, what are some more tips? Oh man, there's so many tips. So a couple more you might try is just, it's, it's almost humorous when we use this one, but we use the tip of just distraction. So and you might feel silly doing this, but if they're having a fit right here, 
next to you. You could just simply grab one of their toys, put it right in front of you as if this isn't even happening, and you just start, you know, transferring the work or doing the puzzle, but you do this with your whole body as if this is like the coolest thing anybody could be doing. <laughs> and before you know it, they're looking at you, and of course they want to join you. And the tantrum just ends and you draw zero attention to it. It's like it never happened, which is what we want. We're not trying to make them feel worse. We're trying to get the tantrum to stop. So distraction is a great one. And then the other one you can do is I say, give a choice and then redirect or, or redirect. Um, so perhaps they're having a fit and this won't always work because sometimes if the tantrum is snowballed too much, it doesn't matter what you say and words are not going to help. But if you can catch it early, you might say, oh, I see you're upset. Would you like to go read a book or shall we go take a deep breath outside? You know, you could give a little mm. quick choice in the moment. Um, and then the other option would be to redirect and redirect a little bit from distract because distract is you're just completely hijacking that moment onto something totally else, something completely different. Um, a redirect would be if they're having say the fit because they want to hold your, your cell phone in, in the grocery store. Right. And you say, Oh, I could really use help if you would hold my wallet. And you just make this kind of this quick switch, would you pull out the credit card for me? And while it's a little bit of a distraction, it's it's more related, so it's more like you're redirecting. Yeah, yeah, those are great tips. Mm -hmm. Jody. let's talk about the aftermath of the tantrum. How do you handle it? How do you move on? Yeah, you know, adults, we tend to hang on a lot longer than the kids do. So we first of all have to sort of let go of that adultiness, of feeling like we have to turn every tantrum into this lesson or this little lecture, right? So one thing we can do is let it happen like it's a blip and the moment they're back, you just keep chugging along like it never happened in, in the first place. Um, and what, what are we modeling for kids? Hey, we all sort of all lose it at some point. It is and we're all um, given space to sort of collect ourselves and move on without having to project shame on that. So if we go back and revisit it with that's not okay to do and attach all the shame to it, um, people just don't tend to um, do their best when they feel worse, right? So our job is to be a social coach and not do all this social scolding, you know, that we do with these little mini lectures, even if we say it in our sing-songy voice, it's a lecture. So instead, um, if we need to go back and revisit as they start to come into that reasoning mind, you are welcome to maybe, hey, that didn't go work, you know, that didn't work very well this morning. Can we talk through a better plan for the future? So the focus is always on what can we do next time? It's very hopeful for both of you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can you explain, like, back up, like, why are these kids having these tantrums? What's going on in their brains? Mm -hmm. Well, there's not an easy answer to that, but there could be a few possibilities. Something to think about tantrums is a biological things. So are they tired? Are they hungry? Are we totally off routine? Because that'll throw anybody into a fit, right? Yeah. Um, or are we simply coming down to they want something and you want something else? And then when they don't give us what we want, they throw a fit and we call that misbehavior. And in reality, it's really just a, it's a struggle of power of yeah. who's going to get their way. So a toddler is finding their voice. They're finding their ability to maybe verbalize with words or at least a bigger presence in the family with their, with their growing mobility and all that. And a tantrum is a way for them to give their voice. And really what they're saying to us is, you're not the boss of me. Give me choices and let me feel capable. And so if we hear the tantrum as that message, rather than I'm nasty and I'm going to throw a fit to make life miserable for you or to humiliate you in the grocery store, it's not that. It's really, you're not the boss of me and I want choices. So if we can hear that message instead and go to that empathetic, empathetic place of, hey, I can see that you really don't want to be told what to do right now and this is really hard for you. Yeah. That's a very different message to them than stop it, stop it right now. 